welcome back to the channel welcome back to the vlog today you join me back at base and i took a week off youtube actually first time since september 2017 and i must say it felt absolutely great took the time to head off with my family so we had a week away as you can see i love the sun so i'm really really colored aren't i <laughs> well look all jokes aside a last photography trip that i had was actually the trip that i had to kerry with my good friend dermot o'donovan and that was a trip which I'll remember for a very, very long time for a number of reasons. And what I wanted to do today was to kind of have a look over the actual amount of images that I would have taken and the footage as well that I managed to capture over such a short period of time. Now, it was on the last episode's premiere that a couple of comments actually people had made and said it'd be great to see behind the scenes in relation to this uh, trip. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go through the time that I arrived, what I did with my time. I think I used it quite well, actually. I'll go through the amount of images as well that I managed to take, how I whittled them down and how I ended up then with the images that I published. And I'm also going to try and do the hardest thing possible is to try and pick three of my favorite images from that weekend trip. So let's go. I'll give you a behind the scenes look at my incredible weekend to Kerry. I arrived on the Friday at approximately 7 p.m. and I headed straight to the coast on the Dingle Peninsula. And where I started out actually was to the Slayhead Drive and I went up to Clower Head. And while I was there, I had some exceptional waves crashing behind me. So I decided to make a video pretty much on the fly because I had all my gear with me because I was going away for the weekend. And that's when I created and recorded my What's In My Bag weekend edition. And what a beautiful backdrop it was for that video. I finished that video at approximately 7.30, 7.40. And as I was heading back to the car, I noticed a ridge that I hadn't gone visiting before. So without even taking a breath effectively, I put my bag back on my back and I took the short hike up to this ridge, which gave me 360 degree views all over Dingle. Now, I had no clouds and the sunset was going to be nice, but with direct light. So what I decided to do was to head up and I got some beautiful panoramic shots, some great drone footage, and I waited around until around about maybe 10 o'clock, which was just after sunset. And from that photo shoot, I managed to capture a number of shots that I was happy to look at later when I got back to base. After that, it was evening time, it was getting dark. So I headed down to my camp up spot where I was meeting my good buddy, Dermot O'Donovan. Now he was arriving later that evening because he was just fresh, as you can say, fresh, coming to Dingle after working for the day, shooting a wedding. But he arrived at around about 1.30. So I parked up and I waited for him to arrive. Now, when he arrived, of course, I had to have my customary beer, you know, to celebrate the start of our weekend. And we crashed out probably around about half past two, quarter to three. Bit insane in reality because we were getting up at 4.30 for the sunrise. So that was the first day and a really, really good and interesting first day. Now it's been in my wish list for the longest time to shoot Dunquin Pier at dawn. So we left our base at Kumanol Beach and took the quick five minute drive up to Dunquin Pier. And what we were greeted with was zero clouds and zero waves. However, I was still confident that we were going to get some nice shots because with the direct light shining straight over onto the Blasket Islands, I think and I thought it was going to be great. Now, it was a pleasure to bring Dermot there as well because it was his first time ever being to Dunquin, never mind say at dawn. And when the light came, we weren't disappointed. Now, I ended up taking quite a lot of shots actually of that and I got some beautiful drone footage as well. And because the standard composition is one real type, you stand on top of a cliff and you look at the winding pier as it goes out towards the islands. I took those shots first and then as the light arrived, I then decided to go down onto the pier. And what I ended up with was two episodes of my vlog from this, one from up high and one from down low. And as the light got better and better as the morning continued on, those islands really started to glow and it was a pleasure to be there to be able to get those shots. By 7am we were done with our shoot and we took the quick five minute drive back to our base at Kuminol Beach where Dermot treated me to an absolutely beautiful breakfast cooked there on the spot from all the facilities that he has in his fantastic camper van. After that, I decided that it's now time to edit the video that I'd recorded the night before, the What's In My Bag weekend edition. And it was a real pleasure to be able to do that actually, while sitting in the back of the camper van on the Wild Atlantic Way. Now, it was also a pleasure to be able to do that because I got to use Dermot's new 
MacBook Pro. And Dermot being the king of gas, it had to be the latest version. And my goodness, it was a pleasure to use. It was so fast to edit and render. Now, while I was waiting for that to render as well, as you would have seen in the videos, we had no real clouds and no real action in the waves. However, I decided to send the drone up for another flight and I managed to get some nice images as well of this iconic spot. It was then decided that we would head into Dingle. The reason for that was twofold. Number one, I needed some better internet connection to be able to upload my video ready to go live on the Sunday. And also I wanted to visit my good friend and probably in my opinion, the best landscape photographer in Ireland, Yaro Fagan, new store that he'd opened in Dingle. Now, if you're ever in Dingle, I would really recommend you go check it out. It's Kerry Views, it's in the heart of Dingle, and I'm sure you're gonna pick up a fantastic print at an amazing price. Around 12 o'clock now and 12.30ish and Dave, the first of our new arrivals came and we decided to go and get some supplies for the afternoon's feast. So we went to a local store and then headed back out to Kuminol Beach where we had number one, a beer, and then number two, we had some beautiful food cooked again by Dermot in a fantastic location with crystal clear waters all around. That was a steak and I tell you, we needed it for the evening shoot that we were about to undertake. 5.30 arrived, it was time for me to do a quick pre-promote of the video that I'd only recorded the night before up on Instagram. Now that was all set and I could get ready now for the remainder of the evening. It was 6.30 in the evening now and the fourth member of our Motley crew arrived and that was Robert. And we decided to take the 30 minute or so hike over Dunmore Head to an absolutely beautiful location. And as you may have seen in the videos there, we were treated to some gorgeous light. And once again, I got some incredible drone footage. Now there was no clouds, so that didn't stop us because what that enabled us to do is be able to get some beautiful light flowing across the rocks, flowing across the, the jagged rocks that were there on the end of the headland. And then just before it got good, some clouds came in, but I was happy that I managed to get the shots until that happened. Now we stayed there till around about maybe 10, 10.30, and then we took the quick walk back down again to Dermot's camper. Now we were gonna get up again at four o'clock, or 4.30 actually, in the morning. So rather than going straight to bed, what did we do? Well, we decided to have a beer and shoot the shit and have a good few laughs and crack as we call it here in Ireland. Now, crack, C-R-A-I-C, is something that we call fun, you know, banter, jokes, not the Colombian delicacy that some people may think it's called. Um, now, we ended up finishing at around 2, 2.30 in the morning. Now, having been up from 4.30 a.m. that morning, we were quite tired and we were getting back up again at 4.30, less than two hours after going to bed. But I'm sure it was all going to be worth it. Now, 4.30 a.m. rolled around faster than you can imagine. And when I woke up, I looked out one window and I saw, once again, clear blue skies. And I figured, you know what? Yeah, it's gonna be the same as yesterday morning. And I decided to fall back asleep. But just as I was about to nod off, something in my head said, always look behind you. And I did just that. And what I saw was some glowing red clouds in the distance. So I quickly jumped out of bed faster than the one one thousand of a speed shutter. And I also shouted some pretty uh, choice words to Dermot that can't be repeated, but I'm sure you get the message. We jumped up very quickly, hopped into my car, and we took the drive over to Clotter Head. Now, we kind of were on the speed limit, probably borderline on the speed limit, but it was worth it because when we arrived there, the light was absolutely glorious. And it didn't stop at that. It actually got better and better as the morning went on. Once again, I got some beautiful photographs from there, and I also sent up my drone, and I captured it, which what I think is probably the nicest drone footage that I've ever captured. We spent around about two hours there, I think, in total, and that was a Sunday morning, and we were pretty much done. So there was gonna be no sign of clouds for the day. We were there since the Friday as it was. I mean, it was under 40 hours in total that I was in Dingle, but I think I managed to cram quite a lot in and use my time as well quite wisely. After this, we head back, and then Dermot treated me to my second beautiful breakfast cooked on the wild Atlantic way. So that's a summary of what I would have done over the very short period of time on Dingle. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into my computer and I'll give you a look at the amount of images that I would have taken, the file sizes and everything else associated with that, including video, how I would have whittled it down then to the images that I liked. And I'm going to try and do something which is quite hard for me to do, but I'm going to try and do it, is pick three of my favorite images from the entire weekend.
Right, so I'm back on my computer now and it's time to go through the amount of images that I would have taken over the couple of days that I was in Dingle. And what I'm going to go through is I'll share a screen grab actually here of my screen and go through the amount of images and also the size that I use for those and also the video. So yeah, we'll jump in here and I'll go through that as the final part of this video. We'll jump in here and I'll show you exactly what I got over the course of the weekend. So what I have here is a folder which is Kerry Weekender and that's everything that I would have uh, captured both video and also images over the course of the weekend. Now the total size of that here as you can see is 154 gigabytes. Now what I normally do is a typical workflow is when I get back I will create a folder for each of the shoots and then I will create a folder for images and create a folder for video. So if we look at the first one that I would have been at there which was on the Clotter set. So that is 23.41 gigs in total. What's that made up of? So on images we have 6.48 gigs and on video we have 16.93. So how many images did I take in the first shoot on Clotter? So that was a total, where is it here? I have 191 images here for uh, Clara set. Now I'll go through in a moment what I would have done in my process taking them into Lightroom, but that's just give you an overview of the amount of photos and image and video I would have recorded on the first uh, shoot. So then we were on to the following morning, which was the Duncan, Dunquin Rise. That was 31.88 gigabytes in total. And of that, there's 4.18 gigs of images and a total of 143 images, I believe. Yeah, 143 uh, images taken from that. Now remember, I split that into two, so I got two videos out of that, but that's the amount of images I would have taken during the Dunquin rise. Then it moved on to the Dunmore set when I was joined by both Robert and Dave. So total size there is 33 gigabytes, and within that, of that, for images, I have a 3.64 gig, and how many photos did I take? I took 102 shots for there. So then we were on to the final one, which was the best yet, you know, the, the morning where I got the glorious light on Clotter. So that was called Clotter Rise. So you can see here on this, this is 43.5 uh, gig. And of that, within the images, it was 3.31 and then 39 gig of video. So how many images did I take on that? I took 134. Uh, images in total. So from that now what we're going to do is we're going to jump back in now to Lightroom and I'll show you the amount of images then that I would have imported into Lightroom and then how I would have whittled those down as well to the final images that I was happy with for the weekend. Okay so now we're in Lightroom and as you can see here what I do is I create a collection so I've got 469 images now that I have managed to bring into Lightroom that I Called some that I didn't really want to bring into Lightroom because they were probably underexposed or they were fall out of focus or whatever it may have been. And then I take the rest of the images in here and you can see when I scroll down the very end here, we're starting off from the first evening and there's a number of shots as you can see here that are underexposed. I take a various amount of shots. Uh, it's grand when you're on digital, it makes no difference, so it's good to experiment and that's what I'd normally do anyway. So then we're continuing on till the very, very end of that evening and then we get to the uh, sunset. And then from there, I actually never really published these here. I took a couple of shots, uh, just purely messing around of the car parked with some stars and stuff like that that were above those uh, during the evening well, while I was waiting for Dermot to come. And then we're on to uh, Dunquin into the beautiful morning I would have had. And again, this is a raw image uh, that I would have taken, my first image of the morning. And we continue on with that. And as I said earlier, I had uh, split my video into two. So I had all the images that I took up on the top um, and then I took some images on the islands. And then after that, what I decided to do was to head down the path. And we head down the path here. So there's the first image I would have taken. Again, an unprocessed raw image. And then I uh, continue on over to the very, very end of that. And I am now with the guys up on Clara Head. So here's the image that I would have uh, shared here from Clara Head when I met up with Dave and Robert. Um, and that was the end of the Saturday and all it left then basically was 
the beautiful sun rays that I would have gotten on the following morning. And I've taken a couple of shots, as you can see here, that I mentioned on the video. I took one image and then I took a second image where I made it slightly brighter. Uh, and then I would have continued on throughout the day and that morning and finished off on all of my shots. Now, what I normally do from here then next is I would start rating my images. So you can see some of these images here have some stars. So I'll rate all of my images as a three star. And then I'll know, okay, they're ones that I think will be good and that I more than likely will export uh, to be able to see what they're like then thereafter. So if I go into filters here, and remember now there's 469 images that I brought in here. But if I go now to uh, rated, that will bring that down here. And I think now when I look at this, we are at how many images? 91. So that's a lot of culling, obviously, of images now. I mean, and these are the ones that I was happy with. And if I'm starting again from each of those here, you can see the progress and the progression of each of those images as the shoots would have gone on. So I was really blessed with a lot of light and some beautiful light as well on these mornings and, and evenings as well. But it made it very difficult then for me to be able to kind of look at these and say, okay, what are my top three? Right, so the final part now of this episode is for me to take the arduous task of trying to pick my three favourite images from my weekend. And I'm actually surprised the three images that I actually did end up picking as my favourites because two of them are panoramics. So the first one is from the first evening when I was up on the ridge and I had this beautiful view all across the entire islands and the headland of Clare Head and I had over as far as Dunmore Head and I could see Keown Chabelle, I could see the Three Sisters. It really was a beautiful vista to be able to have and within the image what I really like about it is that there's such a variance and it's so big that you can only really see it when you zoom into it properly on the screen. It's probably one that I might end up actually getting printed but I really did like that because I had a lot of colour that was there as well and I also as well had some beautiful aspects in relation to the foreground because the rocks that were in front of me I captured them there on both sides because it was done as a pano. The sunlight could have been nicer, there was a bit of cloud that was there However, I'm really happy because it brings back a great feeling to me at the start of my weekend and what was actually to come. And like I would have said from the outset, one of the best things I enjoy about a photography weekend is not just getting out with the camera, but it's also meeting up with friends. And it just so happens that the second image that I actually picked as my favorite image was an image that I took of my buddy Dermot standing on the edge of the uh, spiky rocks on Dunmore Head. The light again here was absolutely beautiful. Now, we had no clouds and that was great because it allowed me to be able to have this light flowing in on the foreground in front with the beautiful jagged rocks as well that are stick sticking up out of the headland. I had the sea stacks that are off the end of Dunmore Head and then I also had the Blasket Islands in the distance. Only one criticism that I have myself in relation to that image, and it's nothing to do with my photo, it's Dermot. I wish that he was wearing something brighter because he was wearing a kind of a fawn coloured uh, shirt and that doesn't really make him pop within the scene. Now, if he was wearing something bright blue, that would have been even better. But notwithstanding that, that is an image that I really, really do like and I managed to nail the exposure as well in relation to that and it was all in focus. And then coming full circle to the final image that I really, really like is again a panoramic. And that panoramic shot to me is one of my all-time favorites because the, I've never been to this area for dawn. Normally I'm shooting into the sun, but with this image here, I managed to get my three favorite islands that are off the headland and off the coast there being basking in the morning light. And my favorite island of all, which is on Tiarucht, that really, really stood out to me. So I put that in the center of the frame. I had no choice, it's the way that they're done, but it worked perfectly well because you've got the blaskets on the left-hand side with this beautiful uh, cloud that was dancing across the top of the ridges. And then on the right-hand side, you've got Anfar Marav with the light as well, beautifully positioned on the foreground in front of me. So they're my three favorite images from this trip. Um, what do you actually think? You know, I'll show you some of the images at the end of the video here. Maybe you can help me pick your 
top three images out of this trip or anything that you might have any further questions to ask me about this trip because it was a very very short period of time I think I managed to cram quite a lot in I used the time quite well and it didn't really distract from my photography well I think anyway but sure I'd be really really interested to hear your thoughts on how you enjoyed the series of images and videos of this weekend's trip and also as well anything that you would like to see or know more about please do let me know in the comments below so I'm going to finish up this episode thank you very much as always for joining me and for your continued support on the channel if it's your first time on the channel please hit the subscribe button give me a like give me a comment and until the next time schlange vor